you know, it's one of those things you've heard about for years. It's about the smart wrestling fans and thinking they know how to book wrestling better than the people involved with wrestling that have been doing wrestling for years, blah, blah, blah. And you certainly know you've heard and seen complaints over the years from people in wrestling, especially wrestlers, about the fans. You don't know the inner workings. You didn't do it, so you don't have a clue or something to that effect, right? Some put it more tactfully, others more directly. A couple of things there. Number one, <laughs> I've talked about this for years, how fucking ironic it is that these guys love to piss and moan at the customers for their product and talk about how the customers don't know when they're ultimately the voice that you should be listening to and heeding and considering with all decisions that you make. But since they don't know all the inner work because they haven't done it before, then you don't really have an opinion that can be respected or trusted, blah, blah, blah. But these are the same motherfuckers, guys, gals, don't matter. That the second one of these professional wrestlers or one of these people in wrestling has an issue with their goddamn rental car, their flipping flight, Man, how quick are they to go to social media and piss and moan about the rental car company or the hotel or the freaking airline? Hypocrisy at its finest, right? They've never worked there. They don't work there now. How would they fucking know the inner workings? Who are they to criticize? Pot, meat, kettle is what I say. But it, it, it speaks to the point of like, Eh, don't dare criticize anything that I'm involved with, but I can sit there and throw stones all freaking day long. No, if you can dish it, you got to learn how to fucking take it, too. Um, so, I've always thought that's dumb. Really. It's like the whole thing of, do you need to be a world-famous chef to know whether that steak that you just had was good or not? Of course you fucking don't. That's dumb. That's dumb. Um, but I've certainly had some eye rolling moments over the past few years when I see Tony Khan getting Wrestling Observer News letter Booker of the Year for several consecutive years. One, because in today's wrestling, how much does that really even matter, right? You're going up against one real booker, if that. If you're anybody but Vince and you got some type of profile and position, you're going to win Booker of the Year. So that, to me, that doesn't say much. Especially when you talk about a cult-like following that votes on the awards from an organization in terms of wrestling journalism that is the epitome of biased AEW propaganda. It is what it is. Like, at least be fucking honest about it. They are not fair and balanced. Don't even try. They are like the militant Fox News. <laughs> they really are. They are the militant Fox News media version for AEW. That's exactly what the hell Meltzer Alvarez, that shit with Wrestling Observer Newsletter, that's what they are. Accept it. So, it's always making me crazy because I'm like, what is he doing that's so great? Oh, he, he's appealing to you, but yeah, appealing to you is part of the problem because that's why fewer people watch wrestling every year domestically because they're appealing to the hardest of hardcore fans, not branching out, not a good thing. Well, you know, what the fuck do I know? But I found this statement from Matt Hardy interesting. And this kind of led me to stop and rethink some things. Here's basically what he said, and I quote, it's a really intriguing concept that so many fans that consider themselves diehard fans, and this is no disrespect to them, but they're so caught up and captivated by the inner workings of the business and why things are happening, they feel like they can book better than the booker who actually runs the show. It's so crazy now. Wrestling fans feel so entitled, especially the more diehard, smart fans that are online. They feel entitled like, no, my opinion counts, you're wrong, and I'm right. That's very strange, but it is what it is. That's the world we live in today, so we just have to learn how to deal with it. But at the end of the day, Tony Khan is the guy flipping the bills. He makes the decisions. 
He's paying everybody, so it's his decision to make. If he makes it, I support him 100%, unquote. Okay. Really interesting statement. Because it really made me think when he said it. It's ironic to me that Matt Hardy would say this. It's kind of like a shot towards the fans. And he was trying to be relatively kind in how he did it. And that's cool. Who gives a fuck? But whatever. Um, but it's ironic. He's sitting there saying that when the guy that he reports to, the guy that pays the bills, is nothing more than a fucking hardcore wrestling fan who just so happened to have a bunch of nepotistic opportunities provided to him based off of his billionaire father's wealth. Tony Khan is a hardcore wrestling fan with a billion dollar budget. With a billion dollar bankroll. That's what the fuck he is. So it's really, really odd when I see Especially if you see people in AEW complaining about this shit. Do you understand who your boss is? Like, he went to school for finance. He's a sports analytics guy. He's a numbers guy. He's a data guy. He's not a fucking wrestling guy. Excuse me, did I miss Tony Khan and his run on the independent scene for a decade? Did I miss his time in WWE? Or TNA? I don't think I did. He's not even really a television guy. So he doesn't even come from back that background. So, to what Matt Hardy says here, wrestling fans feel so entitled, that society is a fucking hole. You, you've seen this change happen over the years. It's not unique to wrestling. This is sometimes where I feel like the people in wrestling are so oblivious to the real world and are too caught up with having their own heads either buried in the sand or shoved up their own ass to really realize how ridiculous what they say actually is. The old, my opinion counts, you're wrong and I'm right. Again, that happens all over the place. There's no different than politics, that's other sports debates, like... It, but the point here is they feel like they can book better than the booker who actually runs the show. The booker who runs the show in AEW is a freaking hardcore smart fan with a bunch of his daddy's money behind him. That's not an opinion, that's in a reality. Is it not? It is an absolute reality. So, if we are to buy this, because certainly, I'm sure you'd have no problem talking about Booker Man being Booker of the Year, let's just say this. If anything, the fact that Tony Khan could come in and be the best Booker in the business Booker of the Year for consecutive years. Doesn't that ma kind of make everybody in wrestling look fucking ridiculous? Doesn't that make all of y'all look kind of stupid? That this guy who has no previous experience in wrestling can come in and do it, you say, so damn well. I disagree with how well he actually does it, but I'm humoring the point here for a moment. If he does it so well, then if anything, he's freaking validation of what fans have said for years, in that in some cases, they literally could book the show better than the fucking people in wrestling. When you look at the history of wrestling, especially during my lifetime, some of its hottest periods came from people that weren't wrestlers being in charge. Vince McMahon is a promoter, son, but he wasn't a freaking wrestler. He came up in the business, so that is different, I'll grant you. But as much as you might want to criticize like a Vince Russo or Ed Ferrara for their time in wrestling as writers, like they were lead writers, that did matter somewhat, even with Vince being the ultimate filter. Like there's a reason the ratings were higher during the time that Vince Russo was writing. You can talk about all the bad things that Dixie Carter ultimately meant for TNA, but shit, under her leadership, the interest was the highest it ever was. The ratings were the highest they ever were. And look at where the hell they are now. They're not even called TNA anymore. They're Impact Wrestling. Who gives a crap? I'm just saying. Right? So you have other examples or instances of people being... And I realize Dixie wasn't the booger before any of you come back and say... 
The point I'm getting at is, though, is that you have some evidence that points to the people that aren't immediately embedded in wrestling and haven't lived the wrestling life for years can come in and do it, and in some cases, do it better. And if Tony Khan is as great as many make him out to be, if he is that star-spangled awesome as a freaking wrestling booker, wrestling promoter, show writer, what have you, then, yeah, if he can do it, other fans could too. And who's to say there wouldn't be fans out there that could do it better, especially if they had the same breaks in life and the same financial opportunities that Tony Khan received. That's not Tony Khan's fault that he got that opportunity from his dad's wealth, but he's been able to take good advantage of it and leverage that into some of the opportunities he received. Again, it is what it is. We'd probably all do it if we were in that position, right? But to sit there and say that these fans don't know because they haven't done it is just dumb. I've seen some of the shit that wrestlers talk about and some of their opinions. They're trash. If you think the wrestling fans' opinions are trash, holy cow. And as far as I'm concerned, if you want to use Tony Khan as the shining beacon on the hill here, he freaking proves that a fanboy can book the show better than the wrestlers and the people involved with wrestling. I think it's ridiculous. What he's doing is like another, you know, cycle. It, it's just a bubble, I guess you should say. Where Tony Khan is a hardcore fan, so he's booking for himself, which means he's booking for his audience, which is who he's appealing to. So you get that constant feedback cycle that creates a cocoon, a bubble, you know, what have you. But using the standards that Matt Hardy's kind of thrown out here, uh, frankly, it's kind of ridiculous because, I want to repeat this one more time, if Tony Khan is as great as his job as so many wrestling fans like to proclaim, then he is absolutely proof positive of the fact that wrestling fans can book better than the people in wrestling. So which is it? Is that bullshit? Or do you believe that Tony Khan is the best booker in wrestling? If you do, then it has to clearly point to that the fans could do a better job of booking this shit than the wrestlers. I don't necessarily agree with that. But... When you see the people that are involved with wrestling, you see what Triple H has done, let's say, with NXT. It ain't that good. I'm just saying. And he's supposed to fucking know better. He clearly does it sometimes. So believe what you want, say what you want, but, you know, if you're going to sit there and call out like hardcore wrestling fans for their opinions and their fantasy booking, you probably should take a look at the guy who's signing your fucking paychecks or the son of the guy who is signing your freaking paychecks and saying, oh, wait, yeah, he's a Money Mark wrestling fan and he could do this better than we can. That's kind of sad if you think about it.